Still a lot of things left to do, a lot of things left to learn in this game. Hmm, interesting starting options here. These are all quite powerful. So this is all going to depend on what our early paths look like. Oh my. Slime boss, too. That makes the rare relic really good. Hmm. Can I just high roll the rare relic and we have a really easy run? That'd be great. This path is the most valuable. That doesn't mean it's a doable path, but if if you were to look at all the paths in this Act 1, none more than the one I just marked yields higher rewards. We get four total elites, uh, a relatively early upgrade, and you can spend money at the shop. So you can expect to get five or six relics going this way, which is very strong. Um, the only thing you have to do is survive, which is, well, easier said than done. Slightly easier path to start. We can go this way, and if we're not ready for this elite, we can just go to the shop. That looks a lot safer overall. Um, you could even just skip this elite, too. Anything on the left side? Uh, not really. Yeah, not really. Yeah, I, I would say you would, on the red route, you would typically, if you just went into that uh, that path with no plus or minus from your starting bonus, I would expect to lose going on the red path. I, I don't think you would be able to to do that without perishing most of the time. If you high roll the potions and the rewards, it, it can go well, but it's not likely to. But if we have a really good relic at the start of the run, it could change. Oh, or we have the ability to not commit with the wing boots. Now, that's interesting. Hmm. Curious. Very curious. Well, I like that quite a lot. We pay 18 health and we get wing boots, allowing us to uh, teleport around the spire. Will Sneko I help? Let's trade. Yeah, it could be another Sneko swap is the other option. So this means we get to fight elites if and only if we think we're capable. We don't have to. I think I might start out green path here then. And if we get strong enough. Ooh, I like this actually. Um, instead of the red path as marked, we go up the green here, fight a bunch of fights, upgrade, fly here, upgrade again, then fight our first elite. We get three elites, two upgrades in a row. Or we can rest if necessary. Either way, let's start here on this floor. Ah, a perfect turn one. That's what you want to see. <laughs> Great. Hmm. Only drawing max two strikes, so we can't even get them both next turn. Embarrassing. Ow. But my face, though. Okay, that was suboptimal. However, we get a regen potion, which will give us 15 of those missing hit points back. And an anger, which is an attack that costs zero. It's definitely better than Warcry or Havoc on floor one. I, I shouldn't need to explain that too much, right? These are infamously not helpful when added to the starting deck. The exact sort of card you want to avoid in early act one. So this is a no-brainer anger for me. Easy peasy. I actually do want to see what this event is. I want to go five combats. That's too many. Hmm. Lose even more health, but get random upgrades. I like it. We'll upgrade one strike and one defend, going questionably low on health, but I think those upgrades will pay for themselves pretty quickly, actually, even just in the next couple of fights. Frick that hell, that's right. Spend it. Is this the fight for the regen potion? Probably not, because we have to kill Jawworm quickly here. Okay, burning blood will save us. Maybe. Don't tell me I'm getting hit again. Anger? Well, thank you, Anger. Um, this is nine, nine, eight. Yeah, that's enough. Whew. That's why I didn't drink the regen potion. I would have had to kill on that turn.
Armaments or cleave. Looks like a good cleave situation. Cleave will help against Slime Boss, too. It's a perfectly cromulent common attack. Definitely a card I wouldn't want more than one of, though. Wear health? Don't worry about it. Health is irrelevant. So is this my regen potion? This is probably my best chance, huh? I'm only going to get five and four out of this, am I not? Hmm. Doesn't feel like a good use for it either. We have to kill on turn three, realistically. Yeah, we have to kill on turn three. Just like the Jawworm. Still no potion, too, so we have more chances to use this. So, like I said, I wouldn't want a second copy of Cleave. Ghostly Armor looks pretty good, though. Ten block for one energy is exactly the sort of card you want when you're about to fight the hard pool of Act 1. That would help quite a bit. So actually, my, my only real concern is this next fight. If the next fight goes badly, we could have real trouble. But if it's a decent fight, like this guy, um, this, this shouldn't be too bad. We'll use our regen potion here, as this fight is definitely likely to go five turns. Although the quicker we can make it, the better. Perhaps better to bash than to defend a second time here. We're likely to draw a lot of damage next turn, and we won't be weak, so let's do it. Can I, and I can actually see that I have guaranteed lethal next turn if I play one more strike. So I guess we only got five and four out of it anyway, huh? I don't want to... I don't want to defend twice here and then have him be 22. We are drawing 21 damage and one mystery card. That's not going to work out. It's not going to work out. We'll take eight here. Would have worked out. Get an elixir. It's not exactly a particularly useful potion. All right, do I do I bend and take the second cleave here? <laughs> I said I wouldn't want two of them, but then they keep getting offered, so uh, I guess I'll take one. I'm not taking Clash. Am I? Actually, wait, I have an elixir. Oh my god. Does anger make Clash better technically? Not really. Does elixir make Clash better? Yes. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. I'm in. Elixir's awesome. That means we have one guaranteed play of Clash, no matter what. We can destroy Ascender's Bane. We can destroy the fourth defend that we drew. Because, yeah, you can just draw four defends and Clash, by the way. Have fun with that. Uh, we do get one upgrade going into the Elite here. Could be an upgrade bash situation. I'm also down to upgrade the Cleave or the Anger. Cleave looks like a really good upgrade. Cleave is perfectly good. I don't usually like to upgrade Bash that much, but it could help a lot. Yeah, I'm going to upgrade Cleave and I'm going to rest as we go into our first Elite here. Not sure we'll be fighting the second one. We'll see. Raymoth with another five gifted subs. The subs keep coming. They don't stop coming. Okay, perfectly playable clash here. It does look like this will be a four turn Grumlin knob fight without drawing Bash turn one and getting a vulnerable clash. I think we're not likely to get the kill fast enough here. Yeah, this is only 27 damage. Take in. He's got 37 health, so. Be taking some damage to the face here. 19. Certainly not guaranteed to draw 19 damage. Okay, that wasn't too bad. We get Bag of Marbles applying Vulnerable on turn 1. 
and I am a believer in bloodletting usually. I'm not sure if this is an acceptable situation for it. Also not sure we're strong enough to take on that Burning Elite. Hmm. Hmm. Should you, should you do the key boss the first chance you get? The keys really don't matter until floor 51. They, they don't matter at all until the very end. So uh, usually acquiring the keys is a matter of doing so in a way that's most convenient to you. Skip the first useless relic you see, but generally speaking in the treasure chest, if the relic provides any help at all, you should take it. Uh, and likewise with recalling. Don't bother doing that until late game. Early game resting or upgrading is going to be far more valuable. What chest relic could make us go for Burning Elite? Pocket Watch, Fossilized Helix. Um, hourglass, maybe? Not that many options. Dead Branch. I don't think Dead Branch... Actually, yes, with the Elixir, Dead Branch would do it. Let's take a bloodletting. I'm not sure it's good, but I'm pretty sure it'll be good later. Meal ticket is not what we were looking for. However, it does provide incentive to go to a shop here. Let's see what this is. We could also maybe get a heal in the event here. Or it could be another treasure chest containing the gremlin horn and a lot of money. Okay, that's pretty cool. Does that make Burning Elite doable? I don't think so. Do not think so. So we could spend some number of Wing Boots charges here if we wanted to. Get two fires and the shop if I use both Wing Boots charges. Did we transform into Clash? No, we actually picked this one on purpose, believe it or not. There is no streak to lose, that's true, but I mean there is a run to lose. We could we could definitely lose the run by picking the burning elite fight. I don't think we can quite handle it. Hopefully want to use two wing boots charges. But I really need to heal from the meal ticket. <clears> hmm. <throat> quite a dilemma. I guess I could use one wing boots charge. How valuable are upgrades anyway? go this way. And Raymoth with another five gifted subs. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Actually, make that seven more. Five plus two. Rounding out to the even 101. 101 total subs gifted. That's ridiculous. And Shuri Sinzo, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. All right, I think I'm going to go green path here. Save one wing boot charge. Miss out on one upgrade. Slime boss practice. Flash showing off why, well, why it's usually not invited to our deck. It's okay. We can play it eventually. Maybe. Excellent. Gremlin Horn, go! That was a very good fight. We get six health, get a liquid bronze, and we can do anger, flex, or twin strike. Maybe consider a twin strike here. Hip is also completely acceptable.
I think I want some strength. This flex is strength. Second anger would make slime boss a little easier. I often find double anger backfires. Skip. And I'm going to warp to the shop. Heal for 15 here. We have 300 gold to spend, pretty much. Which we can use on the bag of preparation. Very good with bag of marbles. Orange pellets is an option. As far as damage goes, I do like adding an inflame. We could add cleave number 7. And there's card remove. Definitely going to buy the bag of preparation. Two more cards on turn 1. Very good. Probably buy in flame as well, because all of these attacks will work much better with strength. <laughs> Do that. Dramatic entrance would have been pretty cool there, actually, with bag of prep, uh, bag of marbles. Well, well, would you look at that? Excellent work from the relics there. Battle Trance. Here we go. Real card draw. It's going to make Clash a lot worse. Don't worry about that Clash. And it was sentries. It would have been burning sentries. Totally was. Some extra health though, so I don't mind that too much. Hey, good work. Actually, would have been a good time to use the elixir. It's pretty good overall, though. Wouldn't have needed it. Get a smiling mask. Removals are now only 50 gold. We get a feed? I'm going to take a feed. Definitely going to take a feed. An attack that does damage if it kills something. Permanently gain max HP is the reward, and that's pretty sweet. And we're going to upgrade, not the feed, but the inflame for more strength. Am I already using RNG fix? Yes, we play with RNG fix currently. Which, as a reminder, removes correlated RNG. Basically prevents me from predicting the random outcomes the game is going to give me. By uncorrelating the randomness. Hmm. Fine. So we lose ghostly armor here. We can play bash anger. Next turn, strike strike will split. Prevents the big hit from striking us. Could play the feed for extra damage. Might be worth it, but then I don't get to eat a slime in this fight. And I've got gremlin horn and 40 health, so I'd like to try. Also got cleave. See, 47 minus 18 is 29. That would split, yes. Yes. So hit them each once. I don't want two small slimes with 29 health. That's too many hit points. How do you fast ass panda? Hi, how you doing? Hey, now I do. I'm gonna split this one because they're both attacking for 18. However, the front one is adding two slimes with the attack, whereas the back one is not. So if I prevent this attack, we save ourselves from having two slimes. Oh, 
get him clash work. Ooh, double attack for 18. That's rude. That is rude. Um, thinking about weak push hitting here. Let's do it. Keep this elixir. Oh, aggro. Can actually play this clash? That's kind of cool. That means no bash. Which I'm okay with, too. Leave them on three, and then hopefully I can eat one of them. Kill you. There we go. Delicious. And nutritious. We are through Act 1 successfully here. We get an offering or an immolate. Immolate bag of marbles gremlin horn is spicy. We've already got a way to do self-harm. And a way to draw a lot of cards, so I like the Immolate, I think, more than I like the Offering. Did you know that I play games other than Slay the Spire? It's true. Catch me over on Baylor Lord Plays for card games, RPGs, strategy games, and more. This will just absolutely clobber Elites in Act 2. And with the Wing Boots, the Bag of Marbles, the Gremlin Horn, we should be able to hunt Elites in Act 2 pretty successfully. So yes, let's grab an Immolate. There was a Sneko Eye. Do I take that Sneko Eye? That's pretty powerful. You could also take Runic Dome or Sacred Bark. Hmm. Runic Dome, huh? Runic Dome is my four energy option. Hot Call Mark Pro says, Interesting that the community decided to mod it away rather than turn it into an increase in the skill slash knowledge cap for the game. Yeah, because it's... I wouldn't call it necessarily a, a skill cap increase. It's hot shenanigans is what is it what it is. It's stripping away the gameplay and normal decision making of the game and trying to use it as a, a meta optimization. It makes the gameplay far less interesting and, and far more tedious, ultimately. Things that we in, in Slay the Spire really value, the balance and design of the game. Using correlated RNG throws all of the things that we hold precious about Spire out of the window, um, which is why I think there's been a sort of collective agreement to, to not try to break the game with it. Can I give an example of it? Yeah, so normally... Let's say you're at a fork in the road, left, right. One way lies a question mark, one way lies a fight. Normally we'd make this decision based on, you know, is a question mark or a fight better for the player at this moment? But if you're abusing correlated RNG, the question becomes, which of these decisions advances the RNG value in the correct manner such that I can get a rare relic for my chest? So you don't care about which is actually better for the run in the immediate. You're trying to metagame a future decision. Um, and I, I'm wondering if, depending on how breakable this is, I haven't truly looked into it, but it could also be something like, which of these paths, left or right, gives me the rare card I want from the boss? And you can, you can like, know ahead of time what you're going to get based on which way you go. Was it just coded like that accidentally? Yes. Yeah, just, just by accident. It's actually pretty easy to do by accident. Uh, and there are lots of lots of different examples in various games where accidental instances of correlated RNG led to 
serious unintended gameplay consequences. I think I'm gonna go with Runic Dome, by the way. I don't need to see what the enemies are doing if I just kill them all. Like this dome here and normally you hate dome? Yeah, it's it's pretty good as far as domes go. Pretty good. Okay, I see with my little eye. That that looks pretty alright. get four elites this act. That's pretty good. It's no shop, but whatever. I do think a lot of card rewards is a good idea. Maybe we should avoid the events. Now that we're in Act 2 and we can find upgraded cards slash we can find powers, currently we don't have much of a scaling plan, and that's what went wrong last time. No late game scaling. So I'm going to take as many combats as possible, which I'm pretty convinced we will slaughter, um, and try to... Find cards, basically. Will we slaughter them, though? That's the real question. We need to clash successfully to make this work. Let's see. I know my exact damage next turn. We deal 18, so I have to get you below 18. Yes, that means we have to clash. Clash and feed, yes. Looks like it. So this is my elixir to save lots of health. Okay. Sounds good to me. Yoink. This arm's a pretty good car, generally speaking. No clash. Never change. This is not a fight we're good at, unfortunately. Not much to decide here. I can just play all my cards, so we do that at every opportunity. Alright, show me the feed now. Hang it. I guess blocking 10 is pretty good. And then we feed next turn, maybe. Yes, we do. Okay, that's pretty good. Get some health back here. Armaments looks decent. We have a lot of cards we can draw, and it could upgrade other cards. We could also just skip. Prefer an Armaments Plus. Jake Cedar says, nearly done with an all-boss incantations only run of Elden Ring. That sounds fun. We could do some fun challenge runs of Elden Ring. Ingwa with the 11 months of support. Thank you, thank you. And yippee ki yay with the six months, the half year. Happy to keep you entertained. I'm going to skip that armaments. I think we can do a little better, surely. All right, finally a fight we're theoretically good at, but we have yet to actually draw our cards correctly, it seems like. What a bummer. I'm gonna get slaughtered here. Okay, no strength buff at least. Do forty one bummer. Bottom deck. I could kill this turn if only I've drawn the bloodletting here. Definitely high evidence this deck needs a remover too. Dang. Dang. Three blocks not even worth it. Just hit him.
me guess. You attack me now? Classic. Ugh. We can grab a Feel No Pain at least. That'll give us block whenever a card is exhausted. And we don't have a lot of that yet. God, what misery. Headbutt's pretty good too. Let's slow down a little bit here. Okay, that's a better turn one draw, especially in this fight. Only do 36 damage, unfortunately. Gonna be drawing Immolate soon. Try to get them towards the Immolate range. Okay, feed works. Yeah, she healed from that one. Is that Elden Ring on PC? Yes. Yeah. It's definitely a, a game that's not for everybody. It's a particular flavor. Um, kind of a lone soul against the world, really. A game where you're always hopelessly outclassed, hopelessly outnumbered. Definitely not everyone's jive. All right, this is not getting landed here. That's what I learned. Snack. Please don't bite me. It bit me. Oh no. Just defend plus and strike and then hope. Good. Well, that was bad. Brutality gives us more card draw. One draw per turn in exchange for one health per turn. Actually seems like the sort of thing this deck needs desperately. We're really struggling to draw enough cards. Um, this could open up Rupture Scaling, potentially, also. So let's give it a try here. Unfortunately, we need to rest before our Elite. The five combats in a row did not work out all that well. But let's see how Elites go. We do have Gremlin Horn, after all. And finally, we got a turn one draw that was correct. This is what we're supposed to draw on turn one. Here we go. You got wrecked, everybody. Blam. Uh, and I'm going to play that Defend just because it means I can play Clash, too. Get in there, Clash. Now, that's what I call turn one. We deal over 100 damage to Gremlin Leader. And we cannot beat on this turn, unfortunately. Boo. Don't hit me. Damn it! <laughs> Damn it. Well, at least we know this turn is safe. Could kill right now. I'll wait one more turn. Excellent. Okay, we get that health back at least, or some of it back. Could have gone so well. We get a mummified hand when we play a power card. A random card in our hand costs zero. That's excellent news. Shockwave, also excellent news. Applying weak and vuln, blocking with the feel no pain. I think we can still do this path. Sure hope so. We're gonna find out. I could go to the shop instead of the Burning Elite if I want to. We'll see how we are after the next Elite fight. Surely I can do one more. No way, nope, can't let you in. A man with ridiculous clothing is here to either let us upgrade two random cards, remove a card, or remove one and upgrade it one at random. 
two random upgrades. It definitely feels nice. Remove looks pretty good too, though. Do I think I would still be playing at A20 if Megacrit decided not to make Intense known to the player? I think the Intense system is pretty core to Slay the Spire. They made that very early on. I don't think I'd be playing this game at all if they hadn't uh, done that. What do you get if you punch him? You lose five health, and that ends the event, basically. That's the I don't want to spend money option. Uh, you, you lose health, by the way, because you punch him so hard that your hand hurts. That's what the event says. Pretty, it's pretty funny. If you've never seen it, the art changes, too. It's great. But uh, that's not what I'm choosing here. I think the two upgrades is probably the best bang for the buck. Give me two upgrades. Yeah, Emily. Here we go. That was worth it. And a self-forming clay. Whenever we lose health, gain three block on the next turn. That brutality is looking pretty sweet now because we picked up two relics in a row that interacted with it. How lucky. How lucky. Okay, next elite is the book. And I have apparently two liquid bronzes, so uh, guess what, nerd? You're getting spiked. Do I drink them both? I guess we could save one for the super book of stabbing, right? Because we can re- if I, if I go this way, this might be book of stabbing again. Let's just use one, is the conclusion I arrived at. Let's just use one. No need to play Bloodletting thanks to the power of the Mummified Hand. Although that would have given me block on this turn. I don't think that would have been worth it. Late deals 31, but what if I play Defend Cleave Clash instead? Delicious. Right, we gained health from the Book of Stabbing. That's a good sign. We get a stone calendar dealing damage on turn seven. That can help with Collector, maybe. An explosive potion will help with the next elites. And cards that I do not want. Leave has definitely been slapping this run. It's been a nice addition alongside the Immolate. Okay, a less exciting turn one this time. We should have used that to hit Bash for free. Here's Cleave. Good work, Clash. All right, I'm gonna pull the same shenanigans again. This time I'm prepared with all block cards, which means you're surely not going to. Oops. Good, because I played the wrong card anyway. So, we can kill right now, or we can risk it. Let's see. If we feel no pain shockwave, we block for three. We weaken Gremlin Leader, who would attack for nine by three, goes down to six by three. So we take 15, maybe, for the chance at a feed here. That doesn't seem worth it in this position. I want to fight this Burning Elite, so let's not risk it. We get a Shuriken. If we play three attacks in one turn, gain strength. We're offered an Exhum. Get a card back from the Exhaust Pile. Very strong. Let's us feed multiple times. Let's us disarm multiple times. Let's us shockwave multiple times. That's quite powerful. Shmammerin, did you know that the Ironclad is actually really young? It's true. He's from the Exumer generation. 
No refunds. <laughs> oh no. My face, though. Forgotten altar, why are you here? Uh, I guess I can rest. Five max health, that's not too bad. My upgrades. My precious upgrades. I don't want to curse. Ow. Pretty much back to where we started there. Hello! Hmm. Not the turn one I was looking for, unfortunately. this. Ow. Ooh, went for the weekend turn one, too. Rude. Can I eat you? Tell me I can eat you. No, not quite. Can exhume it though. Let's eat. Gain the strength and exhume feed. Since I'm not gonna get a double feed here. It's not gonna happen. Here we are. You can just be weak forever. How's that sound? on the preserved insect, don't you think? I should power through, huh? I think we really gotta rest again to beat Collector here. Collector is too, too scary with Runic Dome. Bummer, man. Yeah, the power through clash synergy definitely disables the clash pretty permanently. Kind of scared of power through into collector. I want it because we we would happily take an evolve. It would be good for that reason, but right now it's not that good. Ah. I'm going to skip it and rest. Hate that. Good turn one, though. Okay, excellent start, actually. Wow, that's really lucky. That's really lucky. My only regret is that Cleve doesn't kill the back one here. One strength short. Shuriken doing good stuff here. But your buffs on this turn. Now it's the debuff turn. We don't get attacked here. Damage output's looking pretty good. Stone calendar's ticking down. We are hers. So this is the turn that we had to rest for, basically. Collector on this turn does one of three things. She can either revive the torch heads, buff again, or fireball for a base of 21. Collector currently has three strengths, so 21 goes to 24 with vulnerable on us. That's 36. 
minus weekend should be 27 incoming. Actually, I guess we could survive that, even if we hadn't rested. And we don't even get attacked. That's actually the resummon. Collector is no longer weak. Can I get this to work here? Oh, I didn't draw the immolate. Oh my. Uh oh. Uh, that sounds like I have to exhume the shockwave. Maybe this is the turn I had to rest for. Next turn, the stone calendar will deal 52 damage to all enemies. We don't have a kill here. Strike, strike, cleave, feed, won't kill. I don't believe. No. So yeah, let's exhume Shockwave. Play it. Make them all weak and vulnerable, and then I guess cleave. Not that the AoE matters much. Yeah, so if I hadn't rested, we just died right there. And we do get the feed. Very good. All right. The run continues. Shame we had to double rest, but that's the for forgotten altar for you. Really hurt us there at the end. We're taking another exhum, another feed, or a double tap. I like the second exhum. Double exhuming disarm can really shut down late game bosses. Let's take exhum. I've already got the feel no pain. Oh, Runic Cube, the ultimate in card draw. Whenever we lose HP, draw a card. Very powerful in a deck that has a brutality. And this deck does want to draw more cards. If we wanted more energy, we can take Fusion Hammer, although I think Mummy Hand has us sorted already. Or Astrolabe could try to improve the deck, transform three unupgraded strikes into, well, something. But we could probably just remove those with the Smiling Mask. We've got good reason to go to shops with the meal ticket, too. Ultimately, I feel pretty good about our Act 2. We hunted down some elites and got quite a few relics. We got some great cards added. And now with a good boss relic, I'm pretty happy. Let's take Runic Cube. Runic Cube plus self ring Clay is a fun synergy. Rupture could definitely do as a scaling plan, although there's a few options we could employ. Ooh, I like this path. Uh, I'm hoping to go to some shops this act. Not only will we get heals from the shops and remove some of the shops, but the shops also offer guaranteed um, power cards, which could make quite a big difference. Clash continues to prevail. Well, that draws me a card now, too. Yeah, bloodletting drawing a card is sweet. How badly do I want to eat this nerd? Pretty badly, I suppose. All right, you can hit me one more time. Seven damage, not sure that was worth. Ah, oh, super not worth. Didn't even actually land the feed. Bah. It's a bummer. Flex Plus is interesting in this deck. Rather have real strength. Nah. 
Okay, surely we can eat one of these nerds. Yes, as you can see. Problem is there's a spiker, so I can't just play immolate. I knew it! You stinker. You stinky spiker. Going to eat you. Just like I ate your friends. Well, one of your friends. Okay, I got a block for nine. We can do eight. Sounds good. Okay, that was a good fight. We got six max health, that one. And I will take another shockwave. Yes, I will. Why, yes, yes, I will. Where's corruption when you need it? This deck would love a corruption now. Okay, once again, we can eat everybody here if we are so bold, but I'm not sure we are so bold. Oh, I can't eat anybody on this turn, so... Ouch, I guess. Just ouch. Oh, double ouch. Rude. Oh, well, at least ouch means drawing more cards. Immolate would kill two of them, denying me the opportunity to feed here. So I don't think I'm playing Immolate. Let's do that. Wow. Bottom deck the feed means we don't get to feed on Exploder here. Runji. It's like garbage draw order. Should have used the speed push in there. Definitely should have used the speed push in there. What a terrible fight. God. Ah. Fantasia with 27 months in the prime sub. Thank you, thank you. Terrible fight. Truly terrible. Oh well, we got some healing headed our way at least with the meal ticket. Well, this could go well, or it could go badly. What do you got today, gremlin friends? Reflex 2G with the four months. Are we about to be rich or stabbed? What are you doing with the knife, gremlin? Oh, he's giving us a treat. A gift? A question card gift. We have more options from card awards. A little bit late for that, but uh, better than nothing, surely. And a really appropriate gift from the gremlin, actually. Rupture is here. Rupture gives us strength when we lose health from a card. Now we're talking. How do I feel about Clockwork Souvenir blocking the first debuff each combat? I feel like it's okay. Definitely buying Rupture, though. This could be pretty good. Helps against the heart, in particular work with potion. I'll take it. Means we maybe can't buy a thing at the next shop, but oh well. Hello, mini nemesis. What turn one we've got. Excellent.
play both Exhumes to be able to play Clash here. Might not be worth it, but totally might be. Let's do it. For full block also. Not being able to know what the Nemesis is doing can definitely be a bit of an issue. to assume they're attacking for the maximum amount, the big 45 each turn. Can't quite kill this turn. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so this is the only turn that's safe from being hit for 45. And then hopefully next turn we can kill. like we probably can. Excellent. Max health continues to go up. Singing Bowl is here to let us skip cards for even more max health. Tempted by a power through now, although we have pretty limited time to find something like an evolve. Rupture. It's going to take Max out. I'm going to recall here so I have more options before the final fire. I wish I could take a White Bee statue. Got to take the Sapphire key here. And Repto is about to learn why Gremlin Horn is the best relic ever. It's just that good. Repto is always summoning on turn one. Could rather just play Strike Strike than Immolate, although Immolate does so much more damage. I'll play the Immolate here. Right time to draw Cleave. Let's do Shockwave into Cleave here. Block is not removed at the start of our turn. Definitely the sort of thing that can help us big time here in the late game. That's what we've been looking for, is big powers to put in play. Again, especially with Mummy Hand, it's going to help a lot. If we can get another Feel No Pain or a Corruption, Barricade becomes a lot better. But even if it's just retaining block we get from the self-forming clay, it can help quite a bit. There's the other Feel No Pain. Perfect. It's even on sale. So we definitely purchase that. Barricade also works with Speed Pot Question uh, Clockwork Souvenir. Do I buy a True Grit? Probably not. Probably not. Keep this money for the final shop in Act Four. Frozen Eye might have been something that was worth picking up there. That could have helped with battle trance timing and such. Too obsessed with getting these powers down. Oh, upgrading that disarm might be a really good idea, by the way. That's a really good disarm upgrade. If I'm exhuming it twice. Let's just go. 
Hey, Clockwork Souvenir, good to see ya. Draws a card and gets me three block. I'm not going to do it. Entangled this turn. Six blocks per exhausting card, huh? What a block we get to hold on to. feel no pain or entrench actually both are insane here entrench lets us double our block and when you can retain block with barricade that's a win con win cons are pretty good last i heard surprise merchant would you like a primstone i'd like a card remove is what i'd like Rug is also not terrible here. It's not a bad shrug. Not a great shrug, but it's not a bad shrug. I don't think I want it. Second speed potion's kind of cool. Nah. He's going to go with the remove. And Glowing Tesseract. Let's look at three cards. We have Question Card. We have Singing Bowl. We have Ceramic Fish. This is excellent. Vanessa's is cute. What about Enlightenment? Ooh, what about Enlightenment? Secret Technique looks very good. Could also go double finesse, use the speed potion. There's a lot of options here. This is definitely a good card award, that's for sure. For a good event. I'm thinking secret technique, because we want to be able to fetch, bear, um, fetch disarm or fetch entrench. So yeah, give me secret technique. Give me... I'm thinking about Enlightenment. Make Barricade one cost. Make Immolate one cost. Make Shockwave one cost. Make Entrench one cost. And we've got lots of card draw, thanks to the Runic Cube. So cost reductions do sound very nice. Let's give it a shot here. And then this should probably be Finesse over Good Instincts, or maybe 2 Max Health. With the Potion, I'll take a Finesse. Every little bit counts. Get to upgrade here, and like I said, I want to upgrade this Disarm for one more Strength Reduction. Because I can exhume that Disarm two times in certain fights, very notably Time Eater. Upgrading Disarm is minus three Strength on Time Eater, which is very important when we're doing stuff with Barricade. So let's upgrade that Disarm. And let's hope that Time Eater doesn't hurt us too much in the early parts of this fight. Do I want to bloodletting here? I don't think so. I don't think I want to play any of these other cards. What we want to do is get Barricade and Trench going, I suppose. Block your stinky vulnerable. Ooh. Uh, I can play this for six more block. I'll have to exhume it later. That's fine.
And look at that, that's a pretty good enlightenment. We get one cost barricade, one cost entrench, one cost shockwave. It's not bad. to bother playing offensive cards just yet. Okay, that's our last exhum. So if we want to eat Time Eater, we have to get back feed. So let's do that. Get the sixth block at least. We are losing one health per turn, so we do have to get out of this fight in a relatively quick time frame, but we're also gaining two strength per turn, so that'll kind of counteract it. Not too worried here. Stone Calendar. Oh no, we only have 91 turns left. True, it's true. We only have 500 block left as well. If we're not careful, we're gonna run out of block. That'd be horrible. Foolish. Do ultimately lose quite a bit to that brutality, right? It's like 15 turns here with this fight. Feed where the feed where the feed at. There it is. Okay, so we still have 90 hit points for the second boss. Doesn't seem too bad, right? Another good use for the enlightenment, right? If I secret technique enlightenment, we get a much cheaper hand here. Oh, I can't actually use the Entrench, can I? Hmm. Maybe Secret Technique... Bloodletting? Speed Potion for Heart? It might be. I don't plan on using any potion this act, uh, in this fight. We could get five block out of it, it's true. The Entrench, that is. Secret technique for the bloodletting. Get block next turn and a draw. Still get five block out of it. So yeah, I can play the same same cards anyway, basically.
We take some damage on turn one. Good news is that just makes me draw more cards and get more block on the next turn. So is it really a bad thing? Not exactly. Not exactly. We want to go for Donu first here. Donu buffs the strength of both of them, whereas Dekka is going to add Daze to the deck, which are just going to give us block with a Feel No Pain. Play everything. Cool. Going to disarm Dekka, because Dekka will be here longer. Is also attacking this turn, so I get the block effectively immediately. Taking damage though. We've got lots of health to burn through, thankfully. And again, every time we're short on block, we just get more draw on the next turn, so. It's gonna work out. It's gonna work out. Right? It's gonna work out. Exhume secret technique here. That seems reasonable. I don't plan to feed on both of them. Zoom secret tech, get back enlightenment. So I can enlightenment immolate bash. You really have to kill Donu before Donu buffs strength again. Oh shoot. Uh oh. Alright, we better exhume a shockwave then. Stone Calendar, of course. So it's not going to kill Donu. Well, actually, it will. It just doesn't kill with a feed. But quite frankly, that's good enough. We need Donu to die before that buff goes off, so I'm willing to lose the feed to make it happen. Out of exhumes, right? That's right. Let's just get out of here. Stone Calendar gets 3 max health. You enjoy it, Stone Calendar. Okay. Not too bad. Two thump, two thump, two thump. A deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of all these hit points? Are you ready? Your block dealing at 20, 50 damage. Have I been here before? We're missing 16 hit points. We're going to get 15 at the shop, so I'll upgrade here. Very tempted to upgrade the Brutality, so that we always draw this on turn one. That's very important to get started. What else could be a decent turn one, or a decent upgrade here? We could upgrade one of the Feel No Pains. We could upgrade the Entrench to cost one. Although that would make Enlightenment a little bit worse. I'm going to upgrade Brutality. It's also effectively more energy on turn one, thanks to Mummy Hand. Blood Potion does look like it saves quite a bit of health here. Do we want that over a Thorn's Pot, perhaps? Certainly another card remove looks good. Smiling Mask has done really good work this uh, run. Get rid of Clash. That's not unreasonable. Headbutt good with Entrench. Actually, yes. Headbutt is good with Entrench. Maybe it's just Headbutt removed then. But yes, I agree. Headbutt's awesome here. Lose the Clash. How's it going, Dragonaut? Been watching me on YouTube for a pretty long time. You finally caught me streaming. Your wife says you should be jealous of the radio voice. 
Many are. <laughs> Thanks for the good luck wishes. Okay, we have 129 hit points as we go into our burning, or our, our pre-act ending elites here. It's a miserable turn one, unfortunately. This might be the better fight to use the speed potion in. We'll get a lot more block during this battle. And we can still use the Clockwork Souvenir to block the Vulnerable from the Heart, which could matter quite a bit. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the Speed Potion here, because it's already going to save me something, probably. Although full blocking on turn one, actually not necessarily a good idea. Hmm. Too late. Oh good, we did get attacked, actually, so that worked out perfectly. Excellent. That's excellent. Enlightenment's already in the discard pile. What a bummer. Guess I just secret tech for battle trance then? Dang. This could have been a really good enlightenment, as you can see. Dang. Actually, I'll secret technique for finesse. I don't have the hand space for battle trance. Okay, that's fine. Now we only get attacked for 28. We're already full blocking. I don't need to play Entrench. I can exhume Secret Technique if I wish. I really just want to do damage with Immolate here. Let's exhume the Secret Tech for later. could be a little bad. I'm not sure what our draw is like here. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Bummer. Let's get to play Barricade with this draw either. Barricade makes Shockwave free, at least. Spire Spear is not attacking this turn. The shield might be. Kind of unclear. Let's just get Pussy Armor back. feed, alas. We can feed next turn, is that correct? I believe that's correct. Okay, we have 83 health going into the heart fight. Not ideal, but it might be enough. Uh, especially if we add a Ghostly Armor Plus to the deck for blocking. We take two more health instead. Walena with 21 months, hello to you. Let's grab that. I don't need a third Shockwave, right? Turn one in Trench is not that helpful. However, we have the power of the Runic Cube for this fight and the Self-Forming Clay, and both of them provide big advantages. Namely, every time I play a card, the heart's going to deal two damage back to me, except that two damage makes me draw a card. 
and gain three block next turn. And those are good things. Zoom secret technique. But I still can't play barricade. So we'll have to headbutt it. It's a little unfortunate. Guess we play this. Oh no, ink bottle here. Double feel no pain. And I can enlightenment to shockwave, which I guess I will. I'm not gonna play the immolate, although maybe I should have. A whole bunch of block that does nothing, unfortunately. No barricade here. Oh god. There's headbutt. I really need barricade in play. Let's just do that. Okay, there we go. Now we may begin success. I'm going to immediately draw the card I headbutt if I headbutt a card, so I should just headbutt an anger. Deal more damage here. because we can entrench we exhume secret technique we go entrench finesse to draw a card secret technique to get entrench back the entrench again let's see if I can get headbutt no let's go defend entrench skills in the draw pile. All right. Um, attack it, I guess. I guess I just want to exhume a card that exhausts on its own. I'll take Secret Technique. We can use that next time. Seems fine. in there, Stone Calendar. There we go. Now we can Secret Technique for the Entrench, right when we need it most. Seems perfect.
And then also kill, apparently. GG. No problem. No problem. Great run. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And don't forget to check out Baylor Lord Plays for variety content. Click the blue Baylor icon to subscribe.